Welcome to Inspire Campfire, a podcast where ordinary people tell their stories of extraordinary adventure. These are campfire stories meant to inspire the rest of us to light the fire within, get outside, follow our dreams, and return to tell our own stories. Ready? Let's strike the match. Welcome to the show. I am your host, Scott Wurzbacher, and today we are going deep into the jungle and deep into the mind of an explorer with the courage, curiosity, and desire to go first. It's not often that we get to meet someone who is willing to explore places that have never been explored before. Our guest is Philip Wahamsuren, a passionate adventurer, writer, and father who's been roaming the abandoned roads of the world since 1997. With roots in Mongolia, Philip now resides in Bulgaria. He has explored deeply on solo journeys through places like Bulgaria, India, Mongolia, Panama, and Amazonia, just to name a few. In 2015, Philip attempted to cross Amazonia from ocean to ocean, cycling across the Andes, summiting mountain peaks, floating through the jungle, surviving on fish and spending nights on the banks of the river. On that journey, Philip lost equipment in an accident, was robbed and targeted in a shooting. Ultimately, the expedition came to an abrupt end after he covered only 40% of his intended route. Philip's been back to Amazonia multiple times since to continue his exploration, both of that geographical and natural region, and also to explore the reaches of his own fortitude. Today, we'll be speaking with Philip from Manaus, Brazil, where he just finished leading a trip as he prepares for his next solo expedition back into the jungle. Joining us to help with the conversation is Marina Dina Ilova, who is a friend and guest of Philip and was with him on their recent trip into the Amazon. I'm so excited to spend today with both Philip and Marina as we find out more about his life of exploration and what fuels him in his adventures. Get ready to feel the awe that's about to come. Philip, Marina, welcome to the campfire. Thank you so much. Thank you, Scott. Wow. Thank you so much for being here. You are such an incredible and inspiring adventurer. Uh, we're not going to even be able to scratch the surface in terms of talking about all of the different expeditions and adventures that you've been on. So I want to encourage listeners to go find out about you online, on your website, on Instagram. There are documentaries about you. But today I'm really excited to learn about the man and what fuels you. Philip. You have a very long list of accomplishments, including expeditions all over the world. Yet what drives you does not appear to be about accolades, but something much deeper. In order to provide context for listeners, I wonder if you could just share some of the details of one of your most favorite recent expeditions. So I start with the, with the Bulgarian because my English uh, is very rough. Marina helped me with the translation. Great. Първо, нали, ме пита за кое ме е любимата. Най-любимата ми е, нали, Амазония. Окей. So, his favorite expedition is definitely Amazon. The expedition to Amazon. Because I'm born in the in the North Pole. And the South Pole is a very attractive for me. All the jungle, heat, jungle fever, crocodiles, all the this thing in the tropical, like I'm being a little child, I'm very excited of uh, this particular uh, how to say. The difference, the opposite. Yes. Yeah. The total opposite from what he's used to see and live in. So he was attracted to that from when for, he was a child. For a very young age, I write, uh, read much book for the jungle. So this attract me very well. 
So, Philip, you were born in the northern hemisphere in the cold climate. And yes. so it was the, 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 the tropical feeling of the Amazon and, and, and uh, some of the creatures in the, in the natural world that was there that was intriguing you. That's what I understood from what you were saying. Yes, because it's very ex exotic for me, Amazonian jungle. Very, yeah, very yeah. different, just the opposite. And the he he talks to the tevini, he's a misco the the stupia, and live of Jungwate, he might come in trash to ship his madu Jacques Cousteau, quite a duvatel maybe he won't was nigh. Uh so the museum and negli a call of calypso, not the kind of butchy hot. Mm -hmm. So from the time he was very little boy, he was always very interested into the jungle and his mother helped him to write letters and send it to Jacques Cousteau so he could be part of his expeditions and mission on his boat. Oh, wow. Dream from when he was a little boy. Wow, that is so cool. Like literally dreaming about adventuring with Jacques Cousteau. Yes, but mm -hmm. he, he, he never answered me. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> Wow. So you had to go find out for yourself. I understand. Maybe that was the best thing that he could have done because that further fueled your passion. So I wonder just for listeners, could you kind of walk us through one of those of your Amazonia uh, experiences, kind of what, what that looked like for people maybe that aren't familiar, like what uh, kind of terrain did you go through? Like what, what was kind of an overview of the expedition? I mean, I have a which Ами питате нали, как изглежда за хората, които как преминавам, да, как как преминава, през какви терени преминаваш да, за хората, които нямат никаква идея, да, как, да, да. най-общо как да, преминава да, на, да, 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 една твоя експедиция. Значи аз се стремя да минавам през Амазония максим, максимално лесно, се използвайки кану, uh -huh. защото водните артерии са естествени пътища за преминаване в джунглата и това местните хора го правят. Okay. My major okay. So the main way he travels through the jungle it's through the rivers on a canoe because that's the most popular and local way to do it here. So he follows that. Да. И и по този начин имаш най-добър контакт, визия за джунглата, най-лесно си го виждаш прехраната. А и може да натръгнеш най-много километри. Защото в сравнение с ходенето в гората, път е по-лесен. So that's the easiest way to go to save energy. You have access to food and it's the, the most comfortable way to do it and easiest. That's what local does. And multiple modes of transportation, correct? So the, the, was the, goal, the goal was to go coast to coast. And I read on the website, you started out on a bicycle, but then eventually ended up on a boat. Yes. The, the, first, the first goal of my first expedition is to cross South America to coast to coast. Yeah. A Pacific Ocean to Atlantic. To Atlantic. Yes. yes. But uh, in the beginning, I need to, do, to start with a bicycle mm -hmm. and climb the, some mountain ridge in the Andy Mountains. And then go down with the with the canoe and when i leave the ecuadorian peru border they that uh, start the much problems with the local people who mm, wasn't very welcoming yeah and, yes yeah they robbed me a couple of times and after two months uh, somebody two guys i see them they they shot with the gun wow big distance uh, I don't have damage, any damage, but after this uh, incident, I, uh, um, mm -hmm. he changed his mind and he decided to, to find another way because it was too dangerous. So they were trying to shoot at him from a big di distance, but it was still very dangerous. Understandable. And I'm glad you made that decision because now you're here with us today. <laughs> so, so I'm curious, like what that was like for you when you set out on this adventure, did you anticipate that kind of danger? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. He was prepared and he knew it was possible. But I believe he's be everything good, of course. But he was with the mindset that everything will be okay. And it's, yeah, it's no other way. You have to be ready to do it and not be scared that much. But yeah, yeah he definitely knew that it will be very dangerous. He did to quite which uh 
за да се подготвиш на терен, тя да имаш средства, за да мога да се запознаеш с, с реката, с бързиите, които минаваш. Аз понеже нямах тия средства и просто трябваше да се пусна, нали, да рискувам. И по този начин, по трудния начин, разбрах, че не е окей. Okay. Yeah, and what Philip is explaining is um, to be really prepared, you have to be have a lot of money and explore the terrain before and knew what to know what's gonna be. Hydrodynamic of the rivers, yeah, local cartels, everything. But yes. he didn't have that option, he didn't have the resources to do that, so he decided just to jump to jump right into it. Yeah. I understand that that would that's the the explorer mindset. I think it's so interesting though uh, when you think about this it was the danger of other humans that ultimately forced this particular expedition to a stop as opposed to the dangers that people might expect you to experience in the jungle. In every in every everywhere in the world the human is most dangerous animal i think mm. because in the latter place in the world when i traveling the most big problems is the with the human when you traveling alone you are very uh, easy target philip you do almost all of your expeditions alone So based on what we just talked about being an easy target when you're alone, how does that, you know, your, your desire to do these explorations alone, knowing that you're a target, like, can you help us understand your mindset on that? After this uh, incident, couple of incidents with the local, local people, uh, as a domestic focus, uh, come DV territory of Quito Durinama. Okay. So yeah, after the incidents that were happening, he decided to change the focus and go in the regions that there's no people, it's just nature and animals, so it's much more peaceful and he felt much safer that way. So he tried to avoid humans and go in more regions with no humans at all. I'm curious, do, do you feel a sense of safety in nature? Like away from civilization, do you feel a sense of safety there? Yes, because I working with my full potential and decision I make in the tough uh, terrain is the decision to quit to pray and only put your hands of the život on the Yeah, so it's life saving decisions. So he take he has to take decisions in nature and it's very important. It's life-taking decisions for him in nature. Просто за мен природата е много по-честна. При нея има това и това. There's really clear rules in nature. So that helps him a lot. It's like no complicated human behaviors and connections and attitudes. It's much more simple, much more real. Както казвам аз, когато, когато излезеш от обществото и влезеш в природата, маскарата свършва. Yeah, so it's no layers hiding in nature, your your real self. So when you, you go from the town to nature, your your real self, there's no layers that you hide behind. When you're in nature, how does fear show up for you? How do you experience fear when you're out in the in nature? Okay. So actually the fear directs him how to to live his life it's a it's a way to follow and yes we need to go so yes we need to go here he said we just as a grown up just from a strike so he always listen and i acknowledge that fear and he he walks that way with the fear it's like his way to do it the shot to the shot to some of the strike me because of a queer cut the Вярно да, да завърша нещата, нали? В смисъл не се предоверявам на, само на опита си. So he doesn't just trust his knowledge, his experience, that's the fear, how it shapes him taking decisions and he, he really trusts the fear to take the right decisions. 
Hey everyone, it's Scott here. Did you know that the members of my real estate team, W Realty Group, are listening to their own voices that call to adventure by setting big goals? Some of those goals include planning trips to Bali and the Kingdom of Bhutan, buying investment homes and running the Chicago Marathon. At W Realty Group, we support and encourage these big goals and wanna help turn them into reality. We're currently looking to add new members to the team. If you know a great real estate agent in the Charlotte, North Carolina area that would benefit from being part of our team, please send a text, an email, or give me a call. And know that when you support W Realty Group, you're also supporting this podcast. Thanks for listening. Yes, he trusts the fear. So it feels it feels like the um, the fear that you experience. It's like it's a guiding fear, and it's like primal. Do you experience fear in civilization, and how is that fear different? Yes, is the whole civilization the many possible. And the fear from the civilized world, it looks like it's harder, stronger for him yeah. than from nature. Цивилизацията се чувствам аутсайдер, а в природата разчитам само на себе си и съм порец по някакъв начин. So in the in the normal world he feels a little bit aside, a little bit different and just apart and in nature it's just the opposite, the total mm. opposite. He feels his real self. You know, I think we often talk about fear that is that comes through this fight or flight like this kind of primal you know people often talk about the fear that arises when you're being chased by a tiger right and the fear that most people experience now like in the civilized world most people aren't getting chased by tigers but when you go into these natural environments like amazonia like Maybe it's not a tiger, but you literally you are having that more primal fear, and that's a different kind of fear than most people experience in civilized society. And so I was just curious about how those two different kinds of fear show up for you. Ами първо аз съм се подготвил много добре, като знам поведението на животните, които защитават живота ми и знам докъде мога да преминавам границите с тях. Okay, so before taking those trips and expeditions, he he prepares himself very well. So he he really knows what to expect and how to deal with it. With the with the danger animals. I love how this this connects. I just love the 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 primal aspect of the fear, yeah. And, and, and maybe the most uh, powerful fear, fear in me when I am alone in the jungle is to be hungry. Mm. The hungry is a very powerful, powerful instinct. So this helped me to hunt better, to think better, and to move better. Just hungry, because... <laughs> I don't have a lot of options to have with my backpack provision. I need to hunt my my food. Yeah, I mean it's it's true survival. I mean it's true true survival instinct. И когато съм най-гладен, хващам най-добре. So it's yeah, one of the biggest fear for him is uh, the hunger because you, he doesn't have any provisions with him. So it really depends on what he'll find, how he'll survive, and what he's gonna eat, and that's how you develop your best skills to hunt. And when you're hungry, you have from the need to eat, you, you become very well hunting and very focused and, and more intelligent and more careful and more prepared for that fear. On your website at the top right, there's three values that have little graphics on them. And I'll remind you what they are, but I presume that these are things that are really important to you and that drive you. But th- there's act with values, abandon roads, and explore further. And I just wondered if just you could share what does each one of those mean to you? So act with values. Първо тези рисунки са нарисувани от майка ми, която беше художничка. So those drawings are made by his mom and she was an artist. So cool. they're very important for him. Yes, и 
те символизират будистските ръце на, на даването, на поемането на знание. And so they symbolize the hands of the Buddhism, the giving. Да, и развитие. The development. Yes, and вяра. Uh, and belief. Yes. И акт от Валис нали, има, има предвид, че човек тя да има ценностна система, да знае кога да убива, да убива по-малко, да уважава, да бъде добър. Това е да има една ценностна система към света, която е в хармония с едни правила. Това е акт от Валис. So the act for values, that principle is very important for him and he's saying even when you need to hunt or use the nature to to do it with a lot of respect it's very important abundant roads is па са пътищата които ние сме изоставили защото се смятаме в днешно време че са архаични в смисъл че това вече е изчерпано и това също е свързано с ценната система и то има двояк смисъл другия е нали не тя да изоставяме миналото си защото в него се се So the abandoned roads is those roads that we forgot about it and they're still very important. Пътищата, които миналото, което ни дава мъдрост, всъщност. And that's uh, we can take a lot of wisdom from there and they're very important to us. We can И това е и това е връзката с реално с нали с преди човек има връзка с природата. And that's, и тя е изоставена. And that's actually the connection between people and nature, which, which is a little bit right now abundant to. И, и смисъл е, другия му смисъл на това, това е за това смисъл е да вървя по пътища, по тези стари пътища, да се връщам назад към миналото. Защото and... аз правя експедиции, които са правили каменните хора. And another sense of that is that we need, he needs to go back to that ways It was ancient ways. ancient ways. So he that how our ancestors were going through those roads and now they're a little bit left behind and forgotten. And that's very important for us to to, to stay connected with our ancestors and nature. I just want to repeat one thing that you said, because that just struck me that one of the abandoned roads is the connection between man and nature right now. Yes. And the and the trees uh, explore further е да подминава собствените си граници на страхове и на предсъдъци. So, yeah, explore further is just to pass your fear and push yourself and go beyond to what you, you think you can do and just push and go further. Pass your principles, pass your stereotypes. Воден от абсолютно чисто любопитство. And just um, the drive for that is just the curiosity. Curiosity, one of my favorite words. Thank you for that. I love the three values. Act with values, abandon roads, and explore further. Those are great. Another quote on the website, surrounded by mountains, silence, and the shadows of the campfire, Philip came up with the idea of expeditions powered by human force alone. So, Philip, what is it about expeditions powered by human force that's so important to you? Значи, нали, в началото аз съм пътувал и с моторизирани средства, нали, с други хора в група, но когато сам със собствени сили се предвижваш, ти тя да вложиш много труд, много, много ум. И това е за мен е честно. With fair means. Нали. So in the beginning, uh, Philip was traveling in groups with motorized vehicles, but it wasn't his way. So he, he decided to do it by himself because it's more difficult that way. And uh, that difficulty just gives you a lot of price. You take a lot of price of that. Mm-hmm. It's nothing, it's very difficult, so you don't, nothing is that easy and ready for you so you have to to fight and find a way it, by yourself and that's what he feels like it's fair the fair way to do it yes because it's easy with the machine do some things when i hunt hunt hunting in the jungle i don't hunt with the with the shotgun mm-hmm. I, i i hunt only with my hands and the rope 
you know, rope. Yeah. Copy it. Okay. And uh, spear. Stick, spear. Spear. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, tools that you require the human body and, and, and human effort. Yeah. Yeah, no rifles, no guns. Yeah. You find that more rewarding and more fulfilling to, to, to do your expeditions powered by your own body, by your own muscle, by your own energy. As people are listening to you, I mean, you, you've done some incredibly inspiring things and you've gotten out into nature do people have to experience this for themselves or can they simply learn from someone like you? How, how important is the experiential piece? So everybody that has a different way to, to learn things. And it's Philip thinks that it's not a good idea just to, to copy somebody else because you don't follow your own instincts. Защото когато в природата следваш собствения си инстинкт, ставаш част от нея. Ако ако не, ставаш храна от нея. Because when you're in in nature, when you follow your real instinct and you follow that and you listen and you know how to understand and hear it, you become one with the nature. Okay. And if you don't do that, you you become like Food. <laughs> you become food. Listen, I think that is that is great advice. I think what I just heard you say is yes, there is this peculiar state where man becomes one with nature, but that doesn't mean that you should just go out into nature, into the middle of the jungle, and trust your instinct. It takes practice, it takes learning, and you've got to build up that ability. Is that is that fair? Yes. И, и много пъти аз а, страхам подсъзнанието, интуицията също много работи при мен и ми казвала да се върна. Аз много пъти съм се връщал. And you have to, it's very important to really listen to your, to your instincts and intuition. And sometimes your intuition tells you to go back and you have to follow that and understand and just take steps back. And he, he did that a lot. И тя, и тя, и тя ми спасява живота. And yeah, actually, that's, that's what saves him in the jungle. Those feelings, that intuition, and you have to, to listen very carefully to it. I would suggest that Philip's intuition in the jungle is probably a lot uh, more reliable than, for example, mine would be. Um, and I think some of that comes with, with the experience and the time that you've spent there. I, I have a great respect for the adventures that you've been on and the experience that you've taken and, and that you've developed and that intuition is probably something that has always been with you, but also developed over time. And uh, that's not something that's easily replaced by just deciding one day that you're going to go into the jungle. <laughs> That being said, Marina, you just went on an adventure with Philip in the jungle. And I wonder if you could just uh, tell us just a little bit about the trip you guys just took together and how cool it was to be able to do it with Philip. It was wonder wonderful for me. It was like a dream come true. Um, a little bit similar with Philip. I had the same interest into the jungle. So I was reading a lot. I was watching a lot of movies. And it never leaves me with the time. It just stays with you. And you know that one day you have to do it. And thanks God that they finally came. And I'm more than happy I had the opportunity to do it with Philip because it, it was amazing. It was an inspiration. It was wonderful. Can you just give us a little overview of the actual trip itself? What did, what did you guys do on this trip and where did you go? Yes. So we were a group of people, um, about 10 people all together so we didn't know each other some of us and we started the trip from uh, Manaus we stay in the city for a few days just to meet meet each other just to feel climatization. climatization just sleep well it was different in the hours we were all flying from different places so we ex explored a little bit the city and then we left with a boat for like almost 10 days, 10 days, 10 days, 10 days yes. on the river, on the canals, sleeping on hammocks on the second level of the boat with a very nice crew. And it, it was wonderful. It was magical. And they every day hunting for piranha. <laughs> yes, and, uh, we, we did some really, really cool things. Yeah. 
-hmm. we were going with motorboats we were going with philip's canoe we were cat he was catching um caimans crocodiles for us in a very good way and with a lot of respect again so it yeah. was it was we could see them from so close and what kind of animals did you see yeah so we saw the parrots the toucan the, the piranhas the so so many things what kind of food did you eat on this trip traditional uh local food this is uh yeah it was the crew on the boat so we had a a lady she was cooking for us and it was it local was... family i have my f friends who i ran the boat the captain and his wife wife she cook yeah we had breakfast we had lunches food was not missing at all it was very delicious she was awesome and we can tell she was cooking with so much love and care mm, and love it. Yes, it was a great experience. We ate all those great fruits and all the food was local too, which makes such a big difference. Yeah, to... yeah and we slept on the hammocks, so in nature. No windows, no nothing. No walls, no doors, no windows. So it, we, we really felt part of each other together from that yeah. experience like a, a family. Before we started recording, you had a big smile on your face and you said that the trip was way even better than you had expected and i just wonder if you could kind of share what made it better than expected for you absolutely um what made it really better for me was that it was you know we all have those fears fears that we even we had a lot of information from philip he was so sending us emails with a lot of information we were talking with him and we trusted him of course but you always have those fears in your head so i was really surprised how safe it was how comfortable i was feeling with the jungle with the nature with the vocals so it gave me that option to really melt in nature and be very silenced and absorb everything and enjoy it at 100 percent so i didn't have any other concerns so that made a huge difference for me so i could really really feel everything in a different way. Yeah. And you and I chatted briefly um, a couple of weeks before the trip. And you mentioned to me that you probably wouldn't have taken this trip because you might have been too fearful. But the fact that Philip was guiding made you feel very safe. Absolutely. I trusted him 100 percent. And I was, I was following Philip from so many years. And I'm definitely very thankful I did the trip with him because that was a, a very big changing point to me. All the knowledge, all the stories, just watching him, what he's doing in nature, the, the way he acts with nature and animals, that's incredible. I mean, huge admiration. Philip, uh, when this trip is done, you will begin your next expedition. Can you tell us a little bit about what you have planned? The, the next ex expedition is named the Silent Roots of Amazonia. It uh, it was immensely silent. Next year, we will be in the region in which we are very divi, and we will not be able to see the human face, but we will be in the southern Amazon. So the silence is because it's a very very wild place, and there is no information that nobody has been ever there, and it's uh, in the south. West North. West North part, yes. sorry. Uh, it's, um, it's, a point. it's mountains, mostly it's mountains there. The, the pools, uh, like flat, flat rocks with mountains. Yeah, we would go down these pools, the stability has changed from the time of the And the vegetation, the vegetation on top of those mountains and flat rocks never changed from the time of the dinosaurs. Wow. Because they are wow. very, very isolated. It was a nice study the Poninski Zubrazovania na planet. And that's the one of the oldest mountains formation on the planet. I ja se nasočim v najjužnite časti, najjužnite takie planini na na taj deriga. Ja tu evo cijela severna Amazonija. And he's he's going in that the south 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 point part. south part of the the old um, mountains of the these old mountains in the Amazonia, the north region is uh, all in the mountains in Amazonia. So I the first main goal in the expedition to 
to go to the to this north part to explore. Is there anything that you hope to find or experience on this? This you, you mentioned that the, you're going someplace that no one's ever been before. Is there anything in particular that you hope to find? Ами аз със сигурност ще намеря нещо ново. Въпросът е дали ще ми стигне знанието да определя, че е ново. So yeah, he's, he's sure he's gonna find some new things, but he, he doesn't know if he had the knowledge to really understand and explain what that is, what he's gonna find, but he's sure he's gonna find some species like that there, because there's, there's a lot. Защото за да определя нещо, че не е открито за науката, все пак аз тя имам научно образование. Yeah, because he doesn't have that knowledge, that educational knowledge to determine if it's a new species or not. It's much more specific. That's why he he gonna tape everything that he sees and he doesn't he'd never seen before. And he'll try to, to take pictures yeah. and tape that everything yeah. he sees. Сложността на, на, на тази експедиция, че, че няма нито една точна карта за тия райони. And what that make very uh, difficult uh, this expedition is that there is not even one map about the region. There is no maps at all. Nobody really knows anything about those regions. And и това ще ми отвори много неприятни изненади на място. And that will make a lot of difficulties and very hard surprises for Philip there at, at place because he doesn't know where he's going actually. There's no maps. You cannot very be prepared before what to expect. Yeah. And when he's going on top of those mountains and rocks, there won't be any food anymore for Philip, so he has to hunt down there and bring the food up and save for, for later because up there there won't be any food for him. And on that highest level there's no trees, it's just like small bushes and he has to sleep on the ground. So it's, it won't be any way to, to put his hammock on trees. So he has to sleep on the ground. And he's really, he'll do this expedition with the extreme minimum gear, so he won't have any jackets, any tools. Any sleeping bag, no, no sleeping, no sleeping bag, no, no jackets, and it's, yeah, it's gonna be very difficult. Because he's, he's, he's traveling with the really minimum gear. And if he needs some help there, some someone to save him in in a situation, it's it's actually impossible. It's no way it can be accomplished. And another very big difficulty is about that expedition. It's like on the north. There's of that place, it's a lot of un, un, uncontacted. uncontacted tribes that have never have any contacts with other humans mm. and we never know what to expect and right. what to, to be prepared for. But they have all that knowledge to see him before and see the, the marks, the footprints. On the ground, so they'll know that he's traveling alone, and they'll have all that information. They have all those skills to to know about it. I think most people assume that the the world, the Earth, has been fully explored, but it's it's so inspiring to hear. I mean, you are an original explorer, exploring places that have never been explored before, and. I mean, this is truly the hero's journey that you, you go off and you don't know what you're going to find. And I cannot wait for you to return to tell the story of what you found. And uh, I really look forward to that. But um, in our show notes for this episode, for listeners, we'll include a link to your website. Um, you also post on Instagram and, and in those places 
um, you can find out a lot more about some of the different media that Phillips produced and put out there to share about his adventures around the world. Philip, for those listening that are inspired by you and by your primal drive and motivation, but they can't imagine such a transition from daily civilized life. What advice do you have for those people in how to stay and remain in touch with land and with nature? Um, so, what Philip is saying, uh, we all have that part of us. If we have just to to look inward and wake, just awake that part of us, so we can we can feel it, and it's so different for everybody. Просто тя да се опитва. Обаче най-важното за днешния човек е да да не забравя, че има такова нещо като природа. So they, they have to just keep trying and never forget that nature is out there and it's there for us and we have to try to find a way to it. It's very important. And it's not just for, like, we have to have a different approach towards nature that we have to understand it's not for fun and it's not for, for holidays. holidays. It, no. it has a different mm. value, different sense to our life, importance. Защото когато, ако обичаш природата, ти ще обичаш в най-лошите гневни нейни форми, в буите, Because if you really love nature, you love nature not just when it's easy, you love the, the hardest part of nature, the, the storms, the bad weather, the difficulties. It's not always easy and simple there, but you have to, to love the whole thing as a whole. И ако обичаш, когато тя не е гневна, значи ти имаш and if you love it, even when it's hard and nature is um, like mad, there are storms, and that means you, you have that connection with nature. Mm-hmm. When you find to, to love it in those states that are not very welcoming all the time and they're not very easy, but you have still to love it, that means you have a really good connection with nature. Yeah. Well, you know, Marina, I think it actually is leading to me to back to you you just went on this very cool amazonia experience with philip and as he goes off onto his journey back into the jungle you'll head back to civilization what are you going to take back with you to civilization what how have how has this trip changed you Oh, it's very, very soon for me right now. It's a lot of emotions and I'm sure I'll need some time to really settle yeah. all that thing down, but it's definitely a life changing. I know I, I won't be able to, to be without it. So I think I'll definitely try to find a way to go further and come back and just, um, yeah, I'll try to, to pass those feelings and experience to, to everybody I know because they have different way to see things and i understand that because you have to be here and really experience that and feel it in a very deep level to see that it's it could be very welcoming actually it could be very caring and not not the opposite so much right now it's so much feelings and emotions so much pictures and during that trip what i've noticed i was i was changing at the time right now because i was very silenced i was so much open to silence, quiet, just explore and observe. And it was a lot of feelings. It's beautiful. It's totally understandable. You literally just came out of the jungle a, a day or two ago, and you're going to be uh, absorbing more and more and thinking about it and reflecting over the next, uh, I'm sure, days and weeks. Is there anything else before we wrap up that you would like for listeners to hear uh, as part of this episode? I would say for everybody that people like me, I know Philip, it's, he has a great experience, uh, great qualities, but I'm a, a normal human as everyone. And I want to say that people has to give it a chance and try it and believe they can do it and just give the, give the opportunity and try and explore and see how they react to that. And it's absolutely possible because for me being here, 
even staying more, I had the necessity to, to stay even more and more. So it was absolutely very welcoming to me. And I think it's possible for everybody. It has to be at a certain point if, in your life. You have really to feel it. But yeah, at the right time, I think it's possible for everybody to do it. And you have just to pass those fears and listen to the intuition again, because that's what I did too. I'm a mom, I have two kids and I left them for that journey. And of course I have my own fears if something happens, but I was really calm and listening to my intuition and it was, you have to do it, it's important. And I don't, yeah, I don't regret it all. I'm so glad I did that. Thank you guys. Thank you for sharing your time with me today. I really appreciate it. Philip, thank you for being the inspiration that you are. Best of luck on your next expedition. I cannot wait to hear more about it. I can't wait to see pictures and, and all that comes back from that adventure. Marina, best of luck back to, for you traveling back to the United States. And for those listening, I hope you've been inspired today as much as I have. I hope that Philip's story has encouraged you to listen to the voice inside that calls you to adventure because we want to hear your story next. If you have a story to tell or just need a nudge to create one, please send me an email. We'd also appreciate it if you'd help us spread the word by leaving a review and sharing or tagging Inspire Campfire in your social media. And until next time, I want to encourage you to get outside. Thank you for listening. Marina, Philip, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much, Scott. It was a pleasure for us. It was a huge pleasure for me to be part of this. Thank you, Scott.